Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from The Voip Guys. Uh, last time around, um, we took a look at the basics of advanced IVRs, and Matthias couldn't say E and E. Yes. <laughs> I and E. I and E. <laughs> Again, I. E. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, German's phonetic language, so it's a bit difficult for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, anyhow, uh, moving on, uh, we are going to finish up with the advanced IVR configurations before moving on to a new topic. And this will be uh, the last ep episode with the echoey sound, hopefully. Hopefully. Because we'll have the soundproofing acoustic stuff being brought into the new uh, studio. Anyway, but we're going to soldier on. Show us how it's done. Um, First, before I show how it's done, I show what's the problem. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's always a good idea. <laughs> a good idea, yes. Um, now we have our kind of error handling with the E and the I. Mm -hmm. um, well yes, <laughs> we discussed it and what's um, what the difference and the T option and so on. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between the options? Um, but now we can have another issue. Um, maybe if somebody waits for the timeout, yeah. we don't want to... Um, jump directly to the switchboard, mm -hmm. but we want to read the menu again. Maybe he did not understand one and uh -huh. two, yeah. and maybe again, once again. Yeah. And if he does not choose anything, and then is the timeout, then we want to connect to the switchboard. That's so we're going to give him another chance. Yeah. To that's that's very nice of us. Yeah. Okay, right, then show us how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> so back to our IVR menu again. Here we say IVR1, answer playback, we are waiting. Press 1 goes to Q test, press 2 goes to Q blah. If somebody press something invalid, you just say wrong key and repeat the menu. And if somebody just waits for the timeout, we wait for the timeout and go to the queue, which is called test. Yeah. And that's what we want to enhance, where we would say no, repeat the menu again. Mm -hmm. If a timeout occurs. And then we could just have the idea to say go to and then go to if and if something then we jump to S1 again. So we have to define something where we can rely on and then we can count uh -huh. and then we say if that happens then we jump to. Okay. The next problem is we have to use variables for that and we have to define the variable, uh, the variable somewhere, maybe here at the beginning of the IVR. And we say set, we call it loop. Um, depending on, on what you want, you can start a zero okay. or by one. Oh, yeah. By 100, yeah. does not matter. But I think zero because you loop zero times through mm -hmm. the menu at yeah. the beginning. So if I do it like this, and then I jump to S1, then it jumps again here, and then it sets again the loop to zero. So uh, that's a problem. Yeah. So we don't have to jump to S1, we have to jump to S3, the third line, to the answer. Uh, so we could do it like this, S3. Um, then it would jump to S3, but then if somebody changes the top, the head of the script, and uh -huh. the problem is, that it would jump to another three because we have a new number yep. three. Of course, yeah. That's mm -hmm. very, very ugly. So there is something which is called label. Uh -huh. And you can just add it here and can say, this is my loop. And then instead of S3, you could say, nah, weird jump around. <laughs> um, you could say, go to S loop and then you jump again here to the loop uh -huh. um, and always to the line with the loop label. Okay. Uh -huh. So we don't set um, the loop variable again. Maybe we choose another line because we also don't have to answer uh -huh. the channel each time. So we can directly jump to the playback of the IVR menu. Okay. Next thing we need is we have to increase the variable um, each time we go through the loop. Otherwise it will just carry on looping. Yes. Right. The endless the infinity loop, so yeah. you don't want that. So that's a little bit yeah, 
much to write in asterisk. So okay. you say <laughs> set, then you say again loop equals, and then you have to use this syntax where you can say and loop plus one. So if you'd want to do some math or some testing or something, then you always have to use the brackets. Right, okay, gotcha. And then you can do it and then you say loop plus one and store it again in loop. So each time we call mm -hmm. that line, we will just increase by one. Okay. In other programming languages, or if it's a real programming language, not the <laughs> live run, yeah. and you have just a function in most any case, we just can say increase one because you need it very often. Okay. But here you have to do it like this. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's something new. Mm -hmm. Write it below in the comments. Yeah, if you, if you know a better way, then let us know. Yes. Yeah. For now, we just do it this way. It okay, works. right, fine. Okay, then let's go to the next line. And here we have a go to if. So we say again those brackets. Then I can do a test if loop is smaller than two, because then we don't have. To, I could say three, four. I yeah, don't know. Course, yeah. But then we have to wait very long. Mm -hmm. Then go to s loop. In the other case, just skip the line and go to the Q test. So it repeats, in our case, just uh -huh. two times the IVR menu. And, and after, then... after the second repetition, it'll go mm -hmm. straight to the test key. Yes. Okay. So that's something which is very useful and I think it's used very often. Yeah. Something like this, not only in IVR menus, mm -hmm. but somewhere else where you want to just um, increase a count and do some. Yeah. And it's quite good to give the, uh, the caller the uh, opportunity to hear the me uh, menu again. Yes. And then put them on to somebody who can actually speak. Yes. So we test that. Dial plan reload. And then we just dial again. Hello, welcome to Joe Blogs. So you can Mitch. see here, <laughs> loop <laughs> equals zero. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the menu, we wait for five seconds, what we expected, yes, now it increases the loop again, loop is one, and then it's wrong. <laughs> oh no! Yes, it's wrong. Loop. Can you do some de debugging on the fly? Maybe. Loop. It says greater than two. Then. Yes. <laughs> I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Reload. Hello, welcome to Joe Blog's Fruit and Veg. Press one, more thing is make the change. Mm -hmm. Hello, welcome to Joe Blogs. You can and see veg. one. one for fruit and two he for plays veg. back the menu again. Waits again. Now it sets it to two, mm -hmm. and then it goes to the test queue. Now it works. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the finer details really do matter sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Um, that's basically it for the IVRs. Um, next time around, we will be moving on to a new topic, which will be... SIP in detail. Uh -huh. We did never talk about SIP. We no, just we used it and it worked. Yeah. But in real life, it's very important to understand it. Okay. And to uh, understand the basic concept, uh, concept and to learn how to debug it. And then we can move ahead and do some other things, like mm. connecting to providers. Uh -huh. Which like a lot this. of people have been asking us about. Yes, so but you can only do that if you really understand ZIP. Yeah. So, okay. first things first, as you say always. <laughs> yeah. So we will be back uh, very soon with uh, some more tutorials, but this time around on ZIP trunking and the top, uh, technology of SIP. Yes. Thanks so much for watching. Until Bye. next time. Bye.